Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and it's been a little bit since I've had a video out. I tweeted a little bit ago, but I've been in the process of finishing my basement, and with some work things going on, life has been very busy. That being said, I don't want to overpromise and say we're going to get back to standard production right away, but we are going to start ramping back up into it, and in this video, what I wanted to do was take a look at the Taurus now that it is actually in the game. <clears throat> this is 314, still in PTU. Um, but it is our first look at the Constellation Taurus, which is the cargo variant. Uh, and what we had really expected out of this was to sacrifice a few things for larger cargo. And what that larger cargo was initially supposed to be was this cargo bay in the middle extending further back into the ship. What we got in actuality was a little bit different. Um, overall, we see that the ship ends up being a little bit longer than your normal Constellation. So it's actually able to fit more cargo from that perspective as well. Um, you will see here that you actually have a top turret and a bottom turret, which we will cover in just a moment. Um, and then beyond that, when you look at the exterior of the ship, the other main addition that you'll see is that there's no snub on the back, which we expected. And you are also missing those missile arms on the side that you have on ships like the Andromeda, which is the ones that carried your size one missiles for the ship. So if we get in and take a look at the inside of the ship, um, it's going to feel very, very familiar to other constellations. Um, the bridge is basically identical. You have this nice cable <laughs> that apparently is patched to the ship together running from one side to the other, so be careful of the trip hazard. Um, it kind of has a little bit of a Drake feel there, which I'm assuming is really based on trying to make this feel more like um, the budget version of this spacecraft. Uh, if we go up to the upper turret, um, the experience is similar to what you would expect. You have two guns on here. Um, if we go into third person, you can see how the doors retract and the turret pops up on top. Um, looks basically identical to the other Constellation variants. Uh, what we'll do now is actually head back down and take a look at the bottom turret, where you'll actually see a slightly different uh, option than what you have on um, the other variants. Um, what we have down here is actually going to be kind of tractor beams, um, which is actually pretty handy for things like piracy or looting, um, easily loading and unloading cargo. Um, one use case that I like to look at with this is potentially um, grabbing the saddlebags off of a prospector or a mole and being able to haul them off because you're not necessarily needing anything specific to make that happen. You can just grab this and toss it in the cargo bay once it's actually open. Um, now, what you see as a result of this is obviously a little bit less firepower than you have um, otherwise uh, on some of the other variants, but that doesn't necessarily matter. You still have decent pilot controlled weapons, although that does have a little bit of a change with 314. Um, for those of you that play in Constellations, you knew that 313, the Connie, really came back. It was a great ship. It was great for combat. It was really well-rounded. Now that we're in 314, you have flight model changes and weapons changes, and those end up meaning that you have smaller ships that are more agile and nimble than they were before, meaning it's harder for them to actually be um, you know, engaged when you are in a larger ship and you are now going to be more reliant on things like turrets to protect you. And I guess I've stated that a little bit wrong. It's not necessarily that those ships have gained agility or speed. It's that a lot of the heavier ships have kind of slowed down and general flight controls like yaw have really been tuned down to some degree. So it's just harder to engage with ships that are outside of your class to some degree. Um, when we look in here, um, it's a very similar experience as well. You've got the bathrooms, you've got storage, you've got the table, you've got the airlock to exit down the bottom of the ship. Um, you've got your bunks for your crew, which can also serve as your escape pods. And then when you really get into the magic of the ship, it's the cargo area that you see in the back. Um, you know, again, it's a very large cargo area. It's about 174 SCU, I believe is what the storage capacity is, uh, which makes it significantly more than the max, which was always one of those question marks of how are you really comparing the max to the Taurus? What is the pros and cons? Well, now we're seeing a significant, a significant increase in cargo carrying ability, um, which I think is starting to differentiate those ships a little bit. So then you start going back to the discussion of, okay, where's the value in the max? It's a little bit cheaper. Maybe it goes through the smallest jump points. We're not really sure, um, but that'll continue to pan out as things um, go. The size down here also means that it is perfectly a, a, capable of hauling around like a rock um, for doing planetary mining. Um, you know, you will see that you don't actually have the snub in the back, but you can technically fit a P-52 or 72 in this if you fly it in. Now you don't have the nice docking and undocking that you would expect from having it on the other um, options. Uh, and there's also complications in with calling the ship and having it be available and all pieced together for you. But and it is a very capable cargo hold that's going to net you a lot of money. 
Um, you saw that we were missing the arms on the exterior of the ship for missiles. Um, that being said, you do still have the up top missile launchers that pop out of the um, top of the ship. Uh, and what you have is uh, a pretty heavy contingent of size two missiles. So when we go back to the rear of the ship, what you'll see is um, you know some component spaces here. And then as you get to the very far rear, this is where you typically would have had that access to the snub, but you see that you have a cargo grid on the floor here for additional storage. Um, I don't know if it's been explicitly stated to this point or not, but there's been at least talks in the past about this being a shielded cargo container. Um, so maybe it's harder to scan or this would be used for smuggling or just making it so people don't know where you have valuable components or um, commodities. I haven't tested anything and I don't even know if that functionality is in the game yet, but that may end up being the case for the rear of the ship back here. Um, speaking of lacking a snub fighter, um, I, the snub right now is actually performing better uh, than you would expect in other patches. I guess it was really just last patch that they really came into fruition, um, which means that you're losing out on a little bit of versatility. You don't have the runabout ship. Um, your firepower is going to be drained a little bit by not having the additional weapons and um, you know distraction out there. That being said, even though the snub's in a better place than it really has been to this point, um, it also means that you being in the snub is a very dangerous place to be. So I think what this ship is really designed to be is more capable with maybe two people. You know, you have a pilot and a turret gunner, and you're pretty much well set for whatever you're going to do. Um, you may get to a point to where you need to load up some cargo, and your turret gunner runs down and starts using the, uh, car the tractor beam or whatever it may be. Um, there's also been some rumors that the hull um, has a smaller hit point pool than what you see on the other variants. Uh, I think what I've seen from the research to date is that that's not actually the case. The durability on the ship is about what you see on the other constellations. You're just having different and missing components on this. So when you pool all of the points together um, on sites like Urkel, you don't end up seeing an accurate reflection of the durability of the ship. Um, so, you know, you don't have the, the missile arms, you've got a different turret up front, you don't have the snub and all the docking hardware, like there's all these different pieces of the ship that aren't necessarily there because it's a more simplified version. So I think until we really test the durability, we won't really know how strong or weak it is compared to the others. Um, it's not going to be an armored version of this ship, so I'm not expecting it to be more durable. The question's really just about less and I think right now it kind of stands where that's not really the case. So overall flight model, it handles relatively well. Um, a lot of the ships have changed, so it's hard to really compare to others until you get in and experience it yourself. Design-wise, I think they did a really nice job on the Taurus. Um, I've always been a Max guy in the Max versus Taurus argument, but this is an entry into that arena that's at least making me think twice about which of those options is gonna be one of my go-to haulers in kind of the mid-range category. So. Um, there you have it, Constellation Taurus quick review. Um, if we do some cargo hauling in action, I'll get a video up on it. Um, it's been out for a little while now and I just wanted to make sure everybody had an option to see it and get some impressions on it. Popping the missiles up just so you can see them real quick there. So uh, that's basically it for now. If you guys have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for more content coming hopefully soon uh, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.